Junji Ito is a Japanese horror manga artist. For those who don't know, manga is just Japanese comic books, though they tend to be graphic novel size and cover a much broader range of topics. The art form is so popular, I've seen statistics from 33 to 60 percent of the entire population of Japan read some form of manga on a regular basis. Back in 2021, the top 20 graphic novels in the U.S. were Japanese manga. And last year was Demon Slayer. The Netflix anime series bumped the manga up and it just destroyed all the competition. The era of Marvel and DC Comics is over. But both of them were bought out by corporations who don't care about the books anyway. They just want to make money from the films and merchandise sales. But I digress. Junji Ito's work definitely fits into the subgenre of weird fiction, but his strongest point is the weakest considering the, the Netflix animated series of his work called Junji Ito Maniac, Japanese Tales of the Macabre, because he is an artist, not an author. So there is no copping out with his work. There are no indescribable horrors. So you get to see all the weird, gory details. But his work doesn't translate well to the anthology animated realm. Because the source for a lot of the short stories in the show were literally only a few pages long. Perfect for the manga comic format, but not this. Too many of the Netflix stories are incomplete. They're more like the best scene or a clip from a full-length movie that we never get to see. They often have no real beginning or end. They mostly just exist as an excuse for Ito to draw some really cool death scenes. So fans of Ito will really enjoy the Netflix show, but I'd rather have just gone and read the mangas instead. Though fans of weird fiction should still check it out. Just don't go in expecting cohesive storytelling. So be sure to subscribe for more occult horror and Lovecraft madness. Until next time, Cthulhu Fatagan.